if you come to the iMatter Festival, you would you would drive up and right along the lane in the park where we have it, you'd see people drinking, smoking, swearing. And you gotta remember, you know, sometimes we have to check our hearts as Christians. These are the people we're supposed to be reaching. As Bob likes to put it, these are the treasured. These are the one out of a hundred. These are the one out of a hundred sheep that we're supposed to go out, that Christ encouraged us to go out and find and bring back to restoration, to redemption, to hope again. But our I Matter Festival needed a voice. And I pray that you hear me on this. When we started thinking about who our keynote speaker was gonna be for the I Matter Festival, Bob Lentz wasn't just at the top of the list. He was the list. The church has viewed people as lost and Christians as saved. And I understand where that language comes from, but to be honest, lost, we've made it imply this, you're bad, and we're good. And so because um, they haven't felt valued by us, we usually don't get people to come out. So my first thought when I got there is, oh my gosh, look at all the people. And they weren't church people. They, and, and they definitely weren't the kind of people that um, look a certain way. These people felt cared for. And if there's one thing I could do, I would change the word lost from, um, because if you look at the Bible, and they had the, the lost sheep, the lost coin, the, the lost son, the prodigal son. Um, take the word lost and instead of bad, put in treasured, the treasured coin, the treasured sheep, the treasured son. And I think that's what I, what, what I saw there is instead of feeling lost like, oh, they're disgusting, they're so lost. What I saw was these are so treasured. When something as obvious as teenage suicide, teenage suicide attempts, cutting, depression, hopelessness, is in front of your face continually, how do you turn a deaf ear from it and not listen? And for the last three years, we have done our best in our own frail humanness, our own vulnerability, our own pride, our own selfishness. We've done our best to listen to the hearts of those that the Lord seems to be faithful to keep bringing. And I don't even know why he does that. Um, we don't feel worthy. We don't feel equipped. Yet we're honored and we're humbled that he would trust these beautiful souls to us, even for a time. We needed a vessel who wanted to be used by God to reach a generation that's really hurting. We needed to partner with an organization that knew what we implicitly knew about people under the age of 18. You know, the Barna Group tells us that once young people reach the age of 18, our chances of reaching them for Christ go down to 6%. See, Life Promotions understands this. It's their heartbeat. When they say that they want to reach all young people in America with the gospel before the age of 18, that, that's, that's, what, that's what drives them. That's what makes them get up in the morning. We needed a speaker for this festival who could relate to young people wherever they're at, regardless of what they're going through. We needed a speaker who would promote a sense of life, a sense of purpose, a sense of value in a culture that promotes anything but. You know, they use that John 17, three, this is eternal life, that they may know you, the one true God, and his son whom he sent. This is eternal life. This is life. And it resonates with our I Matter philosophy as well, because we want to project that message of life, of love, of truth, of purpose to every young person that we come into contact with. This kid's name was Chris, and uh, Chris told me he saw me in the school. So I was like, wow, he goes, you were so funny, and you know, I was kind of fishing for a compliment. So I said, Chris, why did you come to iMatter? You know, and it was obvious to hear the speaker. And he said, um, for the music, to find some friends, and to find a purpose to, say, to, to answer the question, do I matter? I wanted to feel like I mattered. And I just, I lost it. And uh, Chris was one of the over 200 people who raised his hand and said, Jesus, you know, you're real. And when this world says no way, and when this world looks at people and said, you don't have a chance, 
um, he said, you know what, maybe I do matter. Maybe I do matter. Hi, my name is Lauren Mahalko and I'm 15 years old. Um, the first conversation was, I was at a school assembly and after the assembly he said anyone who wants to come down can come down. And it was probably the most real conversation I've ever had with any human and the most comfortable. And he just made it a lot of fun. He made you realize that it's not all about being uptight and you have to follow every little thing, but no matter what, you're not going to lose your value. Bob was just so, like his saying is when the world says no way, we say Yahweh. And that was probably the thing at the I Matter, at the I Matter Fest that caught my attention, because it was just like, it's kind of true. <laughs> and can't let the world say no anymore. And I was kind of sick of hearing everyone tell me, no, you're too young. You're too old, you can't do this, you can't do that, too small, you're a girl. It felt really cool to have an adult who actually trusted the kids, because now, as a kid, you kind of feel like you can't do stuff, but having Bob be like, you can do it, you're a kid, but no one's gonna put you down. Now let's get real for a second, let's get a reality check on this whole thing. You're listening to this probably because you're at some event of life promotions, which is just fabulous that you're here, but you probably implicitly already believe everything that we're talking about. But these types of conversations, these discussions, always have to end with the answer to this question, what are you gonna do now? What are you gonna do now? See, Henry Blackaby says that the role of every Christian is to find out where and what God is doing and then go join him. See, I matter. God is moving profoundly through I matter. And he's moving mightily through life promotions. The question is, will you join God in this movement? Will you join God in, in his hand on life promotions? What kind of peace of mind would you have if you woke up every morning, not just blessing your coworkers and your clients as you go to work, with the gospel, with the light and the treasure that already lives inside of you, but knowing that the investment that you've made is reaching teens across this country. I appreciate that you take the time to listen to messages from a humble youth pastor in central New York who believes with all of his heart that the call to rescue this generation is the call of the 21st century church. I really think it comes back to our sense of value. You have to get up every morning and say, you know what, I'm here for a reason. It doesn't matter what people have said about me or what somebody's tried to do to make me feel inferior or insignificant. There's something God created me to do. And I think when you feel that sense of value, it's a lot easier to shake off the discouragement and to rise above, you know, the things that try to pull us down. 